Coming up in just a few days on Monday, it's the Great American Eclipse that will carve a path of totality throughout much of the lower 48. Now here in North Dakota, we'll only see about 50 to 60 percent of the sun covered by the moon. The path of totality goes from Texas all the way up through the Missouri River and Ohio River valleys and up towards the northeast. So we'll see a partial solar eclipse here in North Dakota with, for example, Bismarck seeing 56% of the sun obscured by the moon. And this eclipse will start on Monday, April 8th uh, at about 12.45 to 1 p.m. Central Time, around 11.45 a.m. Mountain Time. The maximum uh, amount of this partial eclipse happens around uh, 1.45 to 2 o'clock Central Time, and then the eclipse the partial eclipse here wraps up around 3 o'clock central time. And this is what it'll look like in our area, assuming that we have clear skies, we need that cloud forecast to work out, where the moon comes up and blocks the view of the sun, 56% of it in Bismarck, and then that moon slides off and the partial eclipse will end as we get towards the mid-afternoon time frame. So it's a rare event, especially if you have plans to travel to that path of totality or if you know someone in that path of totality. About every 18 months, there's a total solar eclipse someplace on Earth, but only once every 300 plus years for each location on Earth does a total solar eclipse occur. And here's a map of the total solar eclipses as we go throughout the 21st century. And you can see there's a lot of gaps in here, so these don't happen that frequently. The next U.S. total solar eclipse is in 2033 in northwest Alaska. A lot of people won't be seeing that one, very sparsely populated part of northern Alaska. And then in our area, actually, in 2044, there's an eclipse that will come down from Canada and in uh, Montana and parts of western North Dakota, including Williston and even Minot, you'll see this path of totality just before the eclipse ends at sunset. Again, that's in 2044, so quite a ways down the line. 2045, there's a total solar eclipse from coast to coast, California to Florida. So the moon has to line up perfectly between the sun and the earth in order for a total solar eclipse to happen, with the umbra being where the, light, the sun's light is completely blocked, the penumbra where the sun's light is partially blocked, that partial solar eclipse. And there's an interesting coincidence that allows eclipses to happen in the first place, and that's that the sun and the moon are the same size in the night sky, relatively speaking. The sun is about 400 times larger than the moon, but it's also 400 times further from Earth, so that allows for the moon to kind of perfectly block the entirety of the sun with, from our viewpoint. Now the moon revolves around the Earth about once per month, and if it lines up perfectly, we get this very tiny eclipse path. But why isn't there a, an eclipse each month if that moon is going around once per month about? Well, the moon's orbit is tilted about five degrees compared to the plane of Earth's orbit around the sun. So during the new moon, the moon is usually passing either below or above the sun in the sky, and its shadow therefore misses Earth either too low or too high. It needs to be perfect on what's called these moon's nodes in its um, uh, orbit around the Earth, and that allows for everything to be lined up perfectly for a total solar eclipse. The distance from, moon, from the moon to the Earth varies. That's because of the elliptical orbit of the moon. So that means the width of the path of totality differs from eclipse to eclipse. This one, the totality uh, path, is about 115 miles wide. So again, here's that path going from Texas through Arkansas, parts of Missouri, Kentucky, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, upstate New York, and into parts of New England. Now, there's some interesting weather impacts during a total solar eclipse. The average uh, time in totality in that path where the moon completely blocks the sun is about three and a half to four minutes. The main weather impact is the temperature can drop about four to 10 degrees. That's with a clear sky. There's a greater temperature drop in a dry climate, and that's just because the sun's heating is lost. And you have the sun heating the ground, the ground therefore heating the air through conduction. So the air near the ground cools first before air a little bit higher up with that loss of conduction. It's kind of like a mini inversion 
in that very low level of the atmosphere. In 2017, when there was a total solar eclipse in Illinois, the temperature dropped from 90 to 84 degrees during totality. There's also usually lighter winds, and there can be a change in the wind direction with that drop in temperature during our solar, uh, total solar eclipse. Not as much warm air rising because of the loss of the sun's heat and not as much mixing in the atmosphere. Similarly, again, when the sun is out, it's radiating, radiating its heat towards the ground. Then you have the conduction that heats the air, and therefore the warm air rises through convection, and that forms those puffy cumulus clouds that we see. So we need that continuous convection. Think about you're putting a pot of water on a, a, a stove top on a burner, and that convection current is running. If you take it off the burner, that convection current is going to stop. So you take away the sun, that convection is lost, and that therefore shuts off effectively the heat and the moisture for these clouds to continue to sustain themselves. Now, large, thick clouds will not dissipate. So if you're in an area with a lot of cloud cover, those won't go away with the path of totality. Uh, a thing that is, uh, has a very small chance of happening is thunderstorms could form on the path's edge. You need a quick and large temperature drop for this eclipse breeze to form when you have that air cooling because the temperature is going to drop and it sinks and then it spreads out and that could undercut some warmer air on the partial eclipse side just outside the path of totality and enough rising air and instability for some isolated thunderstorms to form. And then an interesting impact, animal behavior changes. That prompts many animals to go into their nighttime routines and for example, bees go back to their hives, birds go back to their nests. And don't forget your eclipse glasses, especially here where it'll be a partial solar eclipse. If you don't have eclipse glasses, you can make one at home. We have directions on our website for a step-by-step -step, uh, way to form this DIY solar viewer where you can see through a pinhole that moon shadow to come over the sun. Back to you, Jody and Kevin. I didn't catch all that, Jacob. Could you, one more time, just I one more time. I want to make the shoebox. It's a project. It's a project, I'm gonna do it. and I have a shoe box at home because my son I, needed new shoes. So. I might have to go buy some new shoes. So I, have <laughs> I a got shoe the box. box. You oh, got the darn. shoes. Oh, darn. Nope, I didn't hear that. 